सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स इन टाइटल आर पास वन पेज नंबर इलेवन चैप्टर टू फ्रॉम हंटिंग गैदरिंग टू ग्रोइंग फूड तुषार्स ट्रेन जर्नी तुषार वॉज गोइंग फ्रॉम डेली टू चेन्नई फॉर हिज कजन्स वेडिंग they were travelling by train and he had managed to squeeze into the window seat his nose glued to the glass pane as he watched trees and houses fly past his uncle tapped his shoulder and said do you know that trains were first used about 150 years ago and that people began using buses a few decades later tushar wondered when people couldn't travel quickly from one place to another did they spend their entire lives wherever they were born not quite the earliest people why were they on the move we know about people who lived in the subcontinent as early as 2 million years ago today we describe them as hunter gatherers the name comes from the way in which they got their food generally they hunted wild animals caught fish and birds gathered fruits roots nuts seeds leaves stalks and eggs hunter gatherers move from place to place there are many reasons for this first if they had stayed at one place for a long time they would have eaten up all the available plant and animal resources therefore they would have had to go elsewhere in search of food second animals move from place to place either in search of small prey or in the case of deer and wild cattle in search of grass and leaves that is why those who hunted them had to follow their movements page number 12 third plants and trees bear fruit in different seasons so people may have moved from season to season in search of different kinds of plants fourth people plants and animals need water to survive water is found in lakes streams and rivers while many rivers and lakes are perennial with water throughout the year others are seasonal people living on their banks would have had to go in search of water during the dry season winter and summer how do we know about these people archaeologists have found some of the things hunter gatherers made and used it is likely that people made and used tools of stone wood and bone of which stone tools have survived best some of these stone tools were used to cut meat and bone scrape bark from trees and hides from animal skins chop fruit and roots some may have been attached to handles of bone or wood to make spears and arrows for hunting other tools were used to chop wood which was used as 
firewood. Wood was also used to make huts and tools. In the bottom of page number 12, two pictures of tools have been depicted. In the left picture, tools used for digging the ground to collect edible roots have been shown. In the right picture, tools used for stitching clothes made out of animal skin have been shown. It is also to be mentioned that stone tools may also have been used for these purposes. Page number 13 Choosing a place to live in Look at the map number 2 on page number 13. All the places marked with red triangles are sites from which archaeologists have found evidence of hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers lived in many more places. Only some are shown in this map. Many sites were located near sources of water, such as rivers and lakes. Please note that sites marked with red triangle are Paleolithic sites. And these are Bhim Betka, Hungsi and Kurnool Caves. Sites marked with a blue square are called Neolithic sites. And these are Burz Hom, Mehargarh, Chirand, Daujali Heding, Koldihwa, Mahagada, Hallur, and Payampalli. Sites marked with a green circle are called megalithic sites. And these are Brahmagiri and Adi Channalur. A site marked with a purple diamond is the early village, and that is Inam Gaon. Sites marked with a yellow star are the modern cities and these are Mumbai and Kolkata. Page number 14 As stone tools were important, people tried to find places where good quality stone was easily available. On page number 14, a picture has been shown. This is Bhimbetka in present-day Madhya Pradesh. This is an old site with caves and rock shelters. People chose these natural caves because they provided shelter from the rain, heat and wind. These rock shelters are close to the Narmada Valley. Can you think of why people chose to live here? Rock paintings and what they tell us. On page 14, a painting from a rock shelter has been shown. In this painting, a hunter is shown chasing a wild animal. Many of the caves in which these early people lived have paintings on the walls. Some of the best examples are from Madhya Pradesh and southern Uttar Pradesh. These paintings show wild animals drawn with great accuracy and skill. Page number 15 Sites are places where the remains of things, that is tools, 
pots, buildings, etc. were found. These were made, used and left behind by people. These may be found on the surface of the earth, buried under the earth or sometimes even under water. You will learn more about different sites in later chapters. Find out about fire. Find the Kurnool Caves on map number 2, page 13. Traces of ash have been found here. This suggests that people were familiar with the use of fire. Fire could have been used for many things as a source of light, to roast meat and to scare away animals. What do we use fire for today? Names and Dates Archaeologists have given lengthy names for the time that we are studying. They call the earliest period the Paleolithic. This comes from two Greek words, paleo, meaning old, and lithos, meaning stone. The name points to the importance of finds of stone tools. The Paleolithic period extends from 2 million years ago to about 12,000 years ago. This long stretch of time is divided into the lower, middle and upper Paleolithic. This long span of time covers 99% of human history. The period when we find environmental changes beginning about 12,000 years ago till about 10,000 years ago is called the Mesolithic or Middle Stone. Stone tools found during this period are generally tiny and are called microliths. Microliths were probably stuck onto the handles of bone or wood to make tools such as saws and sickles. At the same time, older varieties of tools continued to be in use. The next stage from about 10,000 years ago is known as the Neolithic. What do you think the term Neolithic means? We have also mentioned the names of some places. You will find the names of many more places in later chapters. Very often we use present day names of the places where people lived in the past because we do not know what they called them. Page number 16 A Changing Environment Around 12,000 years ago, there were major changes in the climate of the world with a shift to relatively warm conditions. In many areas, this led to the development of grasslands. This in turn led to an increase in the number of deer, antelope, goat, sheep and cattle. That is, animals that survived on grass. Those who hunted these animals now followed them. Learning about their food habits and their breeding seasons. It is likely that this helped people to start thinking about herding and rearing these animals themselves. Fishing also became important. The beginning of farming and herding. This was also a time when several grain bearing grasses, including wheat, barley, and rice, grew naturally in different parts of the subcontinent. Men, women and children probably collected these grains as food and learned where they grew and when they ripened. This may have led them to think about growing plants on their own. In this way, people became 
farmers. People could also attract and then tame animals by leaving food for them near their shelters. The first animal to be tamed was the wild ancestor of the dog. Later, people encouraged animals that were relatively gentle to come near the camps where they lived. These animals such as sheep, goat, cattle and also the pig lived in herds and most of them ate grass. Often, people protected these animals from attacks by other wild animals. This is how they became herders. Can you think of any reasons why the dog was perhaps the first animal to be tamed? Page number 17 Domestication Domestication is the name given to the process in which people grow plants and look after animals. Very often, plants and animals that are tended by people become different from wild plants and animals. This is because people select plants and animals for domestication. For example, they select those plants and animals that are not prone to disease. They also select plants that yield large size grain and have strong stalks, capable of bearing the weight of the ripe grain. Seeds from selected plants are preserved and sown to ensure that new plants and seeds will have the same qualities. Amongst animals, those that are relatively gentle are selected for breeding. As a result, gradually domesticated animals and plants become different from wild animals and plants. For example, the teeth and horns of wild animals are usually much larger than those of domesticated animals. A picture is shown for this purpose. Look at these two sets of teeth. Which do you think belongs to a wild pig and which to a domesticated one? Domestication was a gradual process that took place in many parts of the world. It began about 12,000 years ago. Virtually, all the plant and animal produce that we use as food today is a result of domestication. Some of the earliest plants to be domesticated were wheat and barley. The earliest domesticated animals include sheep and goat. A new way of life If you plant a seed, you will notice that it takes some time to grow. This may be for several days, weeks, months and in some cases years. When people began growing plants, it meant that they had to stay in the same place for a long time looking after the plants, watering, weeding, driving away animals and birds till the grain ripened. And then, the grain had to be used carefully. A picture is shown depicting ways in which grain was used. As seed, as food, as gifts, stored for food. Page number 18 As grain had to be stored for both food and and seed, people had to think of ways of storing it. In many areas, they began making large clay pots or wove baskets or dug pits into the ground. Do you think hunter-gatherers would have made and used pots? Give reasons for your answer.
Storing Animals Animals multiply naturally. Besides, if they are looked after carefully, they provide milk, which is an important source of food and meat, whenever required. In other words, animals that are reared can be used as a store of food. Apart from food, what are the other things that could have been obtained from animals? What are animals used for today? Finding out about the first farmers and herders. Turn to map number 2 at page number 13. You will notice a number of blue squares. Each marks a site from where archaeologists have found evidence of early farmers and herders. These are found all over the subcontinent. Some of the most important ones are in the northwest in present day Kashmir and in East and South India. To find out whether these sites were settlements of farmers and herders, scientists study evidence of plants and animal bones. One of the most exciting finds includes remains of burnt grain. These may have been burnt accidentally or on purpose. Scientists can identify these grains and so we know that a number of crops were grown in different parts of the subcontinent. They can also identify the bones of different animals. Towards a settled life Archaeologists have found traces of huts or houses at some sites. For instance, in Burzahom, in the present-day Kashmir, people built pit houses which were dug into the ground with steps leading into them. Page number 19 These may have provided shelter in cold weather. Archaeologists have also found cooking hearths both inside and outside the huts, which suggests that depending on the weather, people could cook food either indoors or outdoors. Draw a pit house Stone tools have been found from many sites as well. Many of these are different from the earlier Paleolithic tools and that is why they are called Neolithic. These include tools that were polished to give a fine cutting edge and mortars and pestles used for grinding grain and other plant produce. Mortars and pestles are used for grinding grain even today, several thousand years later. At the same time, tools of the Paleolithic types continued to be made and used. And remember, some tools were also made of bone. A picture is shown on page number 19 depicting new stone tools. Many kinds of earthen pots have also been found. These were sometimes decorated and were used for storing things. People began using pots for cooking food, especially grains like rice, wheat and lentils that now become an important part of the diet. Besides, they began weaving cloth using different kinds of materials, for example, cotton, that could now be grown. Page number 20 Did things change everywhere and all at once? Not quite. In many areas, men and women still continued to hunt and gather food and elsewhere, people adopted farming and herding slowly, over several thousand years. Besides, in some cases, people tried to combine these activities doing different things during different seasons. A picture of a pot is shown on page number 20. What do you think could have been stored in it? 
अ क्लोजर लुक लिविंग एंड डाइंग इन मेहरगढ़ फाइंड मेहरगढ़ ऑन मैप नंबर टू पेज नंबर थर्टीन दिस साइट इज लोकेटेड इन अ फर्टाइल प्लेन नियर द बोलान पास विच इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट रूट्स इन टू ईरान मेहरगढ़ वॉज प्रोबेबली वन ऑफ द प्लेसेज वेर पीपल लर्न टू ग्रो बार्ले एंड व्हीट एंड रेयर शीप एंड गोट्स फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन दिस एरिया इट इज वन ऑफ द अर्लीएस्ट विलेजेस दैट वी नो अबाउट एट दिस साइट many animal bones were found bones of wild animals such as the deer and pig and also bones of sheep and goat were found other finds at mehergarh include remains of square or rectangular houses each house had four or more compartments some of which may have been used for storage A picture of a house in Mehergarh has been shown. This is what a house in Mehergarh may have looked like. In what ways is this house similar to the one in which you live? When people die, their relatives and friends generally pay respect to them. A picture of a burial from Mehergarh has been shown on page number 20. can you identify the skeletons of the goats page number 21 people look after their dead perhaps in the belief that there's some form of life after death burial is one such arrangement several burial sites have been found at mehergarh in one instance the dead person was buried with goats which were probably meant to serve as food in the next world elsewhere cave paintings in france find france in your atlas the painting here on this page is from a cave in france this site was discovered by four school children more than 100 years ago paintings like this were made between 20000 and 10000 years ago many of these were of animals such as wild horses aurochs an older wild form of cattle bison woolly rhinoceros reindeer and bear painted in bright colors these colors were made from minerals like ochre or iron ore and charcoal It is possible that these paintings were done on ceremonial occasions or perhaps they were made for special rituals performed by hunters before they went in search of prey Can you think of any other reason Page number 22 Elsewhere A Neolithic site Find Turkey in your atlas one of the most famous neolithic sites cattle huyuk was found in turkey several things were brought from great distances flint from syria cowries from red sea shells from the mediterranean sea and used in the settlement remember there were no carts most things would have been carried on the backs of pack animals such as cattle or by people what do you think cowries or shells would have been used for key words hunter gatherer site habitation factory paleolithic mesolithic microliths domestication farmers herders neolithic burials imagine you live in a rock shelter like the one shown on page number 14 about 12000 years ago your uncle is painting 
one of the inner walls of the cave and you want to help him. Will you mix the colors, draw the lines, fill in the colors? What are the stories he might tell you? Let's recall. Number 1. Complete the sentences. A. Hunter-gatherers chose to live in caves and rock shelters because Fill in the blank space with your answer. B. Grasslands developed around Fill in the blank space years ago. Number 2. Why do people who grow crops have to stay in the same place for a long time? Number 3. Why do archaeologists think that many people who lived in Mehrgarh were hunters to start with and that herding became more important later? Page number 23 Let's discuss Number 4 Why did the hunter-gatherers travel from place to place? In what ways are these similar to or different from the reasons for which we travel today? Number 5 List three ways in which hunter-gatherers used fire. See page number 15. Would you use fire for any of these purposes today? Number 6. List three ways in which the lives of farmers and herders would have been different from that of hunter-gatherers. Let's do. Number 7. List two tasks that are performed by both men and women at present. List another two that are performed only by women and two that are performed only by men. Compare your list with that of any two of your classmates. Do you notice any similarities or differences in your lists? Number 8. List the cereals that you eat. Do you grow the cereals you eat? If yes, Draw a chart to show the stages in growing them. If not, draw a chart to show how these cereals reach you from the farmers who grow them. Some important dates The Mesolithic period 12,000 to 10,000 years ago Beginning of domestication About 12,000 years ago Beginning of settlement at Mehrgarh about 8,000 years ago. The beginning of the Neolithic 10,000 years ago. The chapter number 2 ends here. Narrator Babla Kochar Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India